Good evening, Parish family of St. Edward's. Edwards, good evening. And we will enter now into the sacred Triduum. And tonight we'll ring our bell once again, our church bell. This is the last time now that we can ring our bells until after uh, the Triduum when we enter into the resurrection of the Lord. And so let's ring our bell to let all of Stark know that now we enter into the solemn days of the Easter Triduum.
we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather as God's family to begin this sacred triduum tonight, commemorating the institution of the priesthood and the Holy Eucharist. And now, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old meal and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generation self shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our, Our blessing, blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our, Our blessing cup it is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful one. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our My blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you, will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his peoples. Our, Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
in the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him, for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet, 
you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, how fitting it is for us to hear on this Holy Thursday night in the first reading from the book of Exodus, how fitting it is for us to hear the institution of the Passover ritual, the institution of the Passover meal. And we know when the Israelites sat down in the evening of the Passover, to celebrate that ancient meal. The youngest in the family would ask in a ritualistic way the question, what makes this night different from all other nights? That's a good question for us Catholics also to ask. What makes this night different from all other nights? So what's different about this Holy Thursday from all other Thursdays in the year? Well, it all began with the singing of the Gloria and the ringing of the bell. We have not really prayed and sung the Gloria since before Lent, except for the Annunciation and the Feast of St. Joseph. The ringing of the bell is the signaling of the joyful fact that our Lenten season is now done and over with, that we have prepared now to enter into this great time called the Easter Triduum. And so the bell is a signal of joy, but also the bell, you could think of it as a school bell. The bell that was rung in the Gloria is calling us now to come to school so to speak, and to keep our eyes on Jesus, as he says in the Gospel tonight, that he is teacher and that he is model. And so, you know, as the world is in lockdown right now because of the virus, in our own unique Christian way, Jesus calls us to school to be locked down, so to speak, for the next three days so that we can keep our eyes on Him. And so, what does He now begin to teach us? Well, in the Gospel today, He begins to teach us about love and the nature of love. How does He begin the Last Supper in that upper room? He begins it in a very dramatic way. Before the twelve, he takes off his outer garment and wraps an apron around his waist, and he gets down on his knees. God made man. Gets down on his knees before the creatures that he created and begins to humbly wash their feet to the point where Peter is scandalized. He says, no, Lord, you can't do that for me. And Jesus says, I must do it. And so as he goes through the twelve and finishes that task, that humble task, he sits down again, puts on his garments, and I can just imagine all eyes of the apostles were on Christ in wonderment and in disbelief. They were probably thinking, how could he do such a thing for me? That was such a low, a lowly task. And Jesus says, what I just did for you, you now need to do for one another. In other words, he is calling his apostles and calling all of us to humbly serve and love one another as he loves us. So there's the first lesson for tonight, to love one another and humbly serve one another as he does. And you know, 
how timely that message is for us when we find ourselves in lockdown with one another, with our families, when we kind of can't get away from one another, keep our eyes fixed on the love of Christ. We might think to ourselves that kind of love is impossible. To love one another as he has loved us, you're right, it is. And so the next lesson, what does he do? At that last supper table, he gives us himself, his own living body, blood, soul, and divinity, so that now we can love one another in the way that he has asked us to do that. We can love one another with his own living, sacred heart. That's what the Holy Eucharist does for us if we receive it with a living faith and with reverence and adoration. It causes us to love God with all our heart and to love our neighbor as Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. And also tonight we celebrate the great fact that Jesus, as he institutes the Holy Eucharist, he also institutes the priesthood so that perpetual sacrifice of the cross can continue from one generation to the next in the life of the church. You know in the Gospel of Luke, Luke says that at the beginning of the Last Supper celebration, Jesus said this, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover or another translation puts it this way, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover meal with you. It's as if from all eternity, Jesus has desired this moment, this night, to give himself completely for his flock. He desired this moment from all eternity. He was born of the pure flesh of the Virgin Mary, for this moment, to offer that flesh up to the Father for my salvation and for yours. He desired this moment. But what about us? Do we desire this moment? Do we desire the Mass? Do we desire the holy sacrifice of the Mass? Do we desire a living contact? with the living, breathing Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. You know on this Holy Thursday how odd it is that priests find themselves separated from their people. How odd it is that the people of God find themselves separated from the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. But perhaps the Lord is allowing this for this specific reason. Just as he desired the Last Supper meal and to give himself up to the Father, so he wants us to revive our desire to be brothers and sisters, to be his living body, the church. Perhaps he has given us this time out to inflame in our hearts a desire for the living sacrifice of the altar and reception of Holy Communion. Let's deeply desire what Christ has given us. Our faith tells us that this is the source and summit of our faith. Remember, St. Padre Pio said that it would be more easy for the earth to exist without the sun than to exist without the mass. Our faith tells us that the one sacrifice of the cross completed over 2,000 years ago on Good Friday is perpetually made present for you and I at mass. That every single aspect of the sacred passion of Christ is represented sacramentally on the altar and offered to the Father 
so that the Father can once again be well pleased with his people and that you and I can be present at that sacrifice completed so many years ago so that we can be redeemed by it. This is the amazing thing, my brothers and sisters. The Mass is not another sacrifice over and over and over again. It is the one sacrifice completed on Mount Calvary, made present in all its fullness for you and I to enter into. And so that's what makes this night different from every other night. And so that means for you and I, after the celebration of tonight's Mass, it can't be a return to business as usual tonight. Tonight we are in lockdown with the Lord, and we keep our eyes on Him and continue to meditate on the various aspects of His movements throughout these next three days. Remember what he said as he entered into the Garden of Gethsemane to begin his passion. He said to the apostles, watch. Watch what? Watch the Lord, so that we may know what love is really all about, because tonight he really begins to teach us. So tonight, it can't be business as usual. We need to enter into a sacred silence and a sacred stillness. We need to take out our Gospels, especially read the Gospel of John, chapters 14, 15, and 16, because those chapters contain the things that Jesus said, seated at the Last Supper table. He had a lot to say this night. And then chapter 17 of John is his high priestly prayer to the Father, where he opens up his sacred heart like never before, letting us know his desires for us as his body. So at the end of this Mass, the Mass doesn't end as usual. You know, usually at the end of the Mass, we're blessed with the sign of the cross and we're dismissed. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. But not tonight. We're not dismissed. Tonight, the Eucharist is placed on the altar. We'll give it special reverence. We'll place them back in the tabernacle. And then we leave in silence and adoration. And then the altars are stripped as a sign now that we turn our thoughts to the passion of Jesus Christ. So tonight, filled with joy, a night of joy and a night of sorrow, let's thank God for the gift of the Holy Eucharist, and let us ask the Holy Spirit to deepen our desire for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Praise be Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, now and forever. Amen. Let us now present our prayers to our Heavenly Father. In thanksgiving for the gift of the Lord's body and blood, and for the grace to worship him fervently and receive him worthily, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord, who gave the church on this night the gift of the priesthood, may bless and strengthen every priest with the gift of deep holiness and pastoral charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our gratitude for the gift of the Eucharist on this night may strengthen our solidarity with the poor in danger of starvation, the lonely in danger of despair, and the unborn in danger of abortion. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will receive the Easter sacraments this weekend, and for their sponsors and families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper unity among all Christians, an end to divisions, and a spirit of forgiveness and collaboration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill may be strengthened, and that those who have died may be welcomed into eternal joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in thanksgiving for the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we make all these prayers with faith in the holy name of Jesus, our great high priest. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious 
ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept 
the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, an awful sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless also your servants who those sinners. Open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On whose day we told it hecatamundi, misagrebre no,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, Save me, blood of Christ, inebriate me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me, within your wounds, hide me, permit me never to be separated from thee, from the malignant enemy defend me, at the hour of my death call me, and bid me to Come to thee that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel.